in the 38th Judicial District Court of Uvalde County, Texas. Miss, oh, well, let me start with the court is zooming outside of Uvalde County by um, YouTube and Zoom. Is there any objection? No objection, Your Honor. No objection. All right. Well, with that, Miss Kyler Green, would you please begin the announcements? Yes, good morning. Emily Kyler Green, attorney for the department. Vanessa De Los Santos, permanency specialist with Belong. Christy Cannot, permanency supervisor with Belong. Irina Costa, attorney for Juan Lugo. All right, I reviewed um, the report. Um, looks like Juan returned to care on January the 8th. He's in a single independent living facility. Has that place been safe and appropriate meeting his needs? Yes, it is. Is it in his best interest to remain there? Yes, it is. All right, and uh, is he up to date on all of his checkups? Currently, yes. Okay, and he's up to date with his braces? His braces, um, he is going to have to, he had a dental appointment actually on January 8th and um, he's going to have to go back because I think there's, he's needing some work on the braces. Of, but they're being kept up with. Yes, yes. Work. And okay. he just had that dentist appointment on the 8th. Okay. Um, and he is... I, the report said he wants to go to community college. Has he applied yet? He is not. So he was trying to apply to get in um, to TSU. However, he was pending um, his transcript from St. Phillips in San Antonio from when he was attending there. Okay. And he's not working right now? He's not working due to not having the his original documents. Okay. And I noticed your report said that you were working on that. Have you made any progress since the report was filed on the social security card and the driver's license? Yes. Yeah, so we... Um, Juan is wanting a new number. He states that he feels that the person that he left his um, social security card with would be using it. So he, we've told him that he would have to fill out a new application for that if he's wanting a new number. So my question, I guess, is for extended foster care. As far as education, he's not in school, but he wants to apply to school. He's not working, but he wants to work. Um, He's in the Family Alliance Network, and um, he doesn't have a documented medical condition. So are you relying on the Family Alliance Network to qualify him to continue in extended foster care? Yes, that's what we're currently um, using. Okay. All right. Um, and he had his pals. He completed that. He had a circle yes. of support. Yes. And you're asking to continue him in extended foster care, continue him in the current placement, and uh, that if he leaves to extend jurisdiction for a year? Yes, that's correct. Okay. Ms. Kyler Green, any questions? Yes, yeah, Sean, thank you. Ms. De Los Santos, um, have, have you been, how have you been working with Juan and any future employers uh, to try to, to work out the Social Security issue? So I offered to Juan um, to speak to any employers, let them know his circumstances as to why he doesn't have the originals. Um, we do have copies that we've uh, been able to provide him with as well. And I told him I'll, I'll call, I'll write letters to your employer to let them know that it, it is a legit document. It's just, it's a copy and not an original. And it's like a, it's a photograph of the social security card? Yes. Um, is is there anything that you um, can think of that would potentially that the court could do that could potentially um, be provided to employers to show them that it's the, the social security card is is the legitimate one that he has? Um, when speaking with the power, it was asking if maybe we could get something that says, yes, this is his number. Um, it's not something that's just a picture, like a fake number or something. And have you spoken with the secure social security office or like a point of contact from there to determine how long it's going to take for him to get a new card if he if he's trying to do that? We've been seeing um, about five to six months. Okay. So do you think like if the court were to make a finding as to that this is the social security number he was assigned and this is the this is the photograph of it that that could potentially help or do you have any other ideas? I think it could potentially help. I mean, anything that would help would be great. 
Okay. Okay. Nothing further, Your Honor. Mr. Costa. Thank you. Does Juan have a Texas ID? Yes, he does. Okay. And so is he able to use that Texas ID to go get a copy of his birth certificate from the area, from the vital statistics office where he was born? Yes. And I've offered to go get his birth certificate for him. The birth certificate, it, it was the social security card that was the concern. Okay. But he does have a copy of his social security card, correct? Yes. He, ha yes, so he has. Is, is there any way that you can assist him in going to a social security office to order a new card? Yes. Okay. So it appears that those two issues can easily be resolved by taking him either to the social security office or to the vital statistics office to get his birth certificate, correct? All right. Okay. And vital statistics should be able to give him a copy of his birth certificate pretty much the same day if he goes to a vital statistics office in the area where he was born, correct? Yes, that's correct. Okay. And so it really shouldn't take five or six months. This just needs to be planned out a little bit better, doesn't it? The five is getting the original social security card, the co the original social security is about five to six months. That's what we've had trouble with getting when we've ordered it. When the department, when we, the workers have been ordering social security cards, when we get them back, it's taking about five to six months to get back. Okay. But if you go to the actual social security office with Juan, mm -hmm. it shouldn't take five or six months. Is that correct? The, the five or six months is all of the red tape going through belong in the department. Is that correct? Uh, I, I wouldn't know because I typically go through through belong to get okay. the parts. All right. But right now he's in a stable placement. What efforts are being made to help him get his transcripts? So um, I have been talking to Juan to get the, the transcripts. Unfortunately, because of his age, he has to authorize for me to be able to speak with him. So um, that's, I mean, I've been on the phone with him. He just needs to be able to talk to the advisor. Okay. So does he know what he needs to do to get his transcripts transferred? Yes, he does. Okay. Is there anyone at TSU that Belong can put him in contact with that can help facilitate his application process to TSU? So he he has decided that he's going to start off with the community college and then transfer to TSU. Okay. Is there anyone at the community college that Belong can put him in contact with to help facilitate the process of him getting enrolled at the community college? I can look into that. Are there any other resources available to assist him in getting enrolled in the community college? Um, I know that the, I guess, kind of like the house mom that's there at the SIO, um, she has assisted and offered him to rides to the community college to go speak with the advisor and anything that he needs to accomplish that. Okay. Has Juan expressed any interest in obtaining a driver's license? Yes, he does want to get his driver's license. Is there anything that Belong can do to assist him in getting his license? Yes, um, I can speak with the PAL worker for the the um, the waiver for the amount on paying the driver's education. Okay, and do you have additional info, or can the PAL worker provide him with that information in addition to the information for driving the driving course or anything he needs to get his driver's license at this point? Yes. Okay. I'll pass the witness, Judge. Any follow up? No, Your Honor. Anything else you want to add, Mr. Costa? Your Honor, just that with documents, I I really don't think it should take six months. I know that when I'm requesting birth certificates for clients after adoptions, it takes that long. But if you're just asking for a birth certificate for someone, you should be able to go to vital statistics and get a birth certificate. Um, with regard to his social security card, if he needs another copy, I don't know about the number. I don't know if they're going to change that. But if he just needs his social security card, all he needs to do is go to the social security office and request one and they'll mail him a new social security card. So that that shouldn't be a bar either. He, I mean, he might need assistance getting there or having someone walk him through the process if he's never done it before. But um, 
that shouldn't take five or six months either is my understanding. Um, with regard to him wanting to get, you know, his driver's license, I think that that needs to be facilitated. Um, and just whatever help can be provided to get him re-enrolled in school. I think we need to do everything we can to assist him with that. All right. Okay, for the purposes of the extended foster care review, court finds that Juan has returned to care as of uh, January the 8th, 2024. He's currently at Skylar SIL and uh, placement is safe and appropriate, meeting his needs and in his best interest to continue. Court finds that he is current, we're currently working with the Alliance Family Network um, as far as moving forward with, um, let me make sure I state this correctly, to help him prepare for employment, which satisfies 264-101 that allows him to stay in extended foster care. Court also finds that one is uh, looking at going to um, community college. I'm gonna order Belong to assist him with getting a solid point of contact there uh, and to help him get his transcripts transferred. Um, I'm, I'm gonna make some orders just because I think I've said this before, but. There's, there's always the ability and the possibility for the youth that are in care, especially if they've left and come back, to kind of um, be at a loss as to what they need to do and to also be of a mind frame that they don't even know what questions to ask and that sometimes they're afraid to ask those questions, they're afraid to get help, um, or they just don't know where to go. So I'm going to make some orders that address that in one situation. Um, first is getting, helping him get a, a point of contact at the school, not only to get his transcripts, but also to get those transcripts to the community college and get him enrolled. Um, if he doesn't follow through, he doesn't follow through, but we need to at least help him make those connections because he doesn't have a, a parent that's doing that for him. I'm also gonna order that Belong go with him to the county tax office of the county of his birth or his residence to get a birth certificate. You can order it right there, right then and there. And the same thing with the social security office, go there and get a new card and then he can apply for a new number. Once those two things have been done as soon as possible, then we need to get him a driver's license. Um, again, if Juan does not follow up, I said the same thing about the braces. If he doesn't follow up, then that's on him. But we at least have to make these things available to him and make sure he understands what he needs to do and where he needs to be. Um, I'm going to find that he had his circle of support, that he has completed PALS, and that he has his PALS worker information. I'll find that Belong has made reasonable efforts in doing those things and making sure he got back into an SIL and uh, staying in touch with him and then getting him his circle of support and helping him to complete PALS. Uh, we just need to get these other things rolling so that he can get into school and, and, and stay in extended foster care. Anytime they come back like this, the last thing I want to do is discourage them in any way and make them feel like they're not getting the support they need. So, and I'm not saying that's happening here. I'm just saying what I've heard this morning, we just need to uh, push a little harder, I think, with Juan. I mean, it was the same way with his braces. He, he's not going to go out there and get it done unless he gets pushed and he doesn't have a parent pushing him. So that's what we're going to have to be. We'll be back June 6, 2024 at 1030. June 6, 2024 at 10.30 for our next extended foster care review. Ms. Kyler Green, anything I failed to address? No, Your Honor. Okay. Well, thank you all for your time and your service. If nothing further, all parties are excused. Is there any objection? Thank you. No objection. No objection, Your Honor. All right. With that, Ms. Kyler Green, would you please begin the announcements? Yes, Your Honor. Emily Kyler Green, attorney for the department. Christy Canada, song, attorney, attorney for the department. Advisor with Belong. Sorry, Richard Sullivan, attorney for the mother. Ms. Ramirez, can you un unmute and announce, please? Connie Ramirez, um, mom. Mr. Harris, attorney for father, Mr. Velasquez. Mr. Velasquez, please unmute and announce your name. Anthony Velasquez. Oh, yeah. Rochelle Acevedo for Father Ramsey Ramirez. Judge, um, he had an emergency, um, but
but I I believe we have a, a partial agreement for today. Irene Ocosta, attorney for the children. Jill Roden, Tri-County Casa. Sandy Hudson, Tri-County Casa. Ona Powell Belong. Brenda Bolsterbaum, K-Star Counseling Services. Clarissa, a therapist for Connie Ramirez. All right, Mr. Velasquez, I need you to turn your video back on if you're sitting, please, sir. And then who is Chris? That was the counseling service, Your Honor. I think she said her first name was Brenda. Brenda from K Star Judge. It says I can't start the video. The host has disabled my video. Well, I turned it off because you were moving around. I'm here at work. Go ahead. Okay. All right, anyone who's not an attorney or will be giving testimony, please raise your right hand. If you're giving testimony, please raise your right hand. Or if you're one of the parents, please raise your right hand. Ma'am from K-Star, if you could please turn to thank you. Do each of you swear or affirm the testimony you give in this matter will be the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth. So if you got. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Thank you. Yes. Mr. Velasquez, I'm going to need you to put that camera somewhere where it doesn't move. Okay. Right. I'm about to get to the table, please. Parties were able to confer. Um, do you have, I'm hoping you have some sort of agreement after 30 minutes. We do, Your Honor, and sorry about the time. So um, if, if the court's ready, I can I can lay it out. Go ahead. Okay, so um, in in lieu of pushing this, um, the motion that the mother has filed to a separate date or to pushing it, not hearing it at all, um, the parties have agreed for placement of the children um, with Mr. Ramsey. Um, and for the mother, these are the um, this is the access that the parties have agreed to in terms of increased access for the mother. So she is asked to attend the funeral of Mr. Ramsey's father um, with the children and the Department of Belong and all parties agree to that. Um, she would like to take the boys to visit <coughs> their um, I guess it's their new cousin cousin or, ne or niece, or niece or nephew. I'm sorry. Her, Ms. Mr. Maris's daughter has had a child. So um, whatever um, gender that baby is, they would like to go. Um, she'd like to have them go meet their new uh, niece or nephew. Um, she would like to, and the parties agree for her to be able to attend the, all doctor's appointments and dentist appointments with her children. And she's allowed to attend uh, games and field trips for the school uh, for her children. Um, and her visits shall be four hours unsupervised on the weekends, as long as they don't interfere with Mr. Velasquez and the continued no contact between Mr. Mears and Mr. Velasquez is to continue. Is that the entire agreement? Uh, I, I believe so. I don't know if any of the parties have anything else to add, but that's, that's what I had written down. Okay. Ms. Acevedo said something to the effect of a partial agreement. What were you referencing, Ms. Acevedo? Uh, oh, as far as that, Judge, I think because we have two motions, this is just the agreed part on on my end. I believe that we that uh, Mr. Saldivar still wants to reset his portion or at least his motion. Yes, yes, Judge, that's correct. Um, just because of Mr. Ramirez's situation with his father at this time. So we're asking that in the interim that this agreement, this partial agreement be uh, ordered and that we can come back at a different date to hear uh, Ms. Ramirez's motion for monitored return. Is that your agreement, Ms. Ocosta? Yes, Your Honor, it is. Um, Ms. Harris? It is, Your Honor, although I want to remind all the parties that uh, Mr. Velasquez has provided the name of his sister and his mother as possible respite and able to help with appointments and things like that. Um, that that information has been provided, and I believe checks have already been done. Did you all discuss that in your negotiations? We did not, Your Honor. I just wanted it as a reminder. Okay. Is there any objection to using these folks as respite? 
Judge, I, I, I haven't talked to my client about that, so I would, I would need to discuss that with her. There was no motion right. or anything on file. We all discuss it because, yeah, it's not set for today, but if we can, if you all can talk about it without the need for a hearing and see if there's something you can work out, that would be more uh, expeditious. Um, Judge, I forgot to make one request. If we could uh, get ordered to a, 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 a staffing or a family group conference so that we can discuss prior to our next setting on the motion, uh, given that she's her her time is going to be increased to see how that goes and maybe we might be able to work this out before coming back to our motions here i think that's a good idea miss greenley can you look and give me a date that's uh, a couple weeks out for a reset on this please i think we already have a hearing date set your honor we do have, we have a we have a um permanency hearing on the 13th but 13. it's only set for 30 minutes and I'm guessing this is going to take more than 30 minutes and we have a full docket. Well, what do we have for a couple of hours after that? We could set it at 1.30 on the 20th. And if you want, if they want, if the parties agreed, we could push back the permanency hearing one week to the 20th at 1.30 and do it all that day. Any objection? Okay with that, Judge. No objection. No objection. No objection here. Miss, what I mean is you heard the agreement. Is that the agreement you made? Yes, sir. Mr. Velasquez. Your Honor, I just want to point out to the other attorneys in the case that we may possibly be in a jury trial on the 20th. Well, let's see what happens. If we need to reset, we'll reset, but let's keep it there for now. Jury trials tend to settle. We'll see what happens. Mr. Velasquez, is this the agreement you made? Um, yes, sir. All right. Did you both have an opportunity to discuss it with your attorney? Yes, sir. Ms. Let me ask you had an opportunity to discuss it with your attorney. You both understand what's expected of you? Yes. And you both entered into the agreements voluntarily? Yes. Okay. Anything else that you want to add, Ms. Acosta? Your Honor, just that I think that this agreement gives us time to see how the increase in visitation goes before we hear the full monitored return hear, um, hearing. And I think that, I mean, this is what the kids want right now. If they can't be with their mother, Ms. Ramirez, then they they want to be with Mr. Ramirez for the time being, and they want increased access to their to their parents. So I, I think that this is a good step moving forward. Okay. Ms. Hudson? Absolutely agree, Your Honor, with uh, Ms. Acosta's comments and uh, that the kids should be with Ramsey while mother finishes up her services and they get ready to go home. Okay. Based on the agreement of the parties, court finds that um, Mr. Rodriguez is not present due to an emergency. However, Ms. Acevedo has agreed on his behalf for a, pl a placement with him um, ASAP. Um, and then as part of that agreement as well, uh, to place with him, Ms. Ramirez will have increased access. She can attend the funeral. I'm sorry to hear that. You have my condolences of Mr. Ramirez's father, along with the children. She can take the boys to visit the newborn relative, attend all the doctor and dentist appointments, games and field trips for school, and increase their visitation to four hours unsupervised, provided those visitations do not interfere with Mr. Velasquez's uh, visitation. And I'm gonna to continue to no contact order between Mr. Velasquez and Mr. Ramirez. Um, we'll reset Mr. Saldivar's motion and the permanency hearing to February 20th at 1.30. It's February 20th, 2024 at 1.30. And in between now and then, I'm going to order the parties to have a staffing or FGC regarding this motion that Mr. Saldivar has set and any of the other issues, including the respite care Ms. Harris brought up. Um, it sounds like we need to get some visitation done and, and kind of see how things go uh, before you all try to reach any agreements past today because you're not going to have any new information. So maybe give that, it's the first, you have till the 20th. So maybe give it a couple of weeks, see how things go and then get some water under the bridge and then figure out whether or not we have an agreed hearing on the 20th or if we need to have a contested hearing. And if there is a jury trial that some of you are involved in, then we'll obviously have to move this hearing, but let's keep it there for now. Anything I failed to address? Uh, 
No, Your Honor. Thank you very much. No, Your Honor. No, Your Honor. I appreciate you all working on this, coming to some resolution. I think we're headed in the right direction on this case. I'm glad to see where you all are going with it. And I hope that things continue. I just want to remind you, Mr. Velasquez and Mr. Robiedez, this case is still very much open. The rules still apply. Keep working your services. Keep doing what you're supposed to do. Uh, we're on the right track, but it's real easy to slip up and get off. And I don't want to see that happen. I want to see, I want to see this continue to go where it's going. So thank you all for that. If nothing further, thank you all for your time and your service. All parties are excused. Thank you. Thank you. Is there any objection? No objection. No objection. No objection. No objection. Your Honor, I do have concerns about it being streamed on YouTube from the caregiver's perspective. Is it going to be um, deleted by the end of the proceeding or how long does it stay on YouTube? I usually delete everything the same day. Okay. All right. Thank you, Your Honor. You're welcome. All right. I did get a time announcement from the department saying that there would be a potential concern. Mr. Wynn, do you not have the yes, ability sir. to turn on video? Or are you just on the phone? I don't I don't have internet. My there's something going on with my cell phone towers where I'm at, so I'm only able to, to call. All right, that'll be fine. Thank you. Um, Ms. Kyler Green, what uh, what's the status as of this time as far as testing? Uh, Your Honor, we uh, we have an agreement right now with um, with with the mother, and we have an agreement right now, I believe, with Mr. Um, Mr. Hopkins. We're still waiting on a on a as to TMC to the department, and, and I can go through what the what those terms are, but. When it comes to Mr. Wynn, I actually don't know. I, it was up in the air as to about an hour ago. Can you shed some light on that for us, Ms. Salcedo? Uh, judge, and I apologize. I, 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 we, we have been conferring um, at length, Judge. And uh, at this time, my client would like me to ask for a reset. Um, we've been going back and forth on um, the possibility of having dad being evaluated. I think the the department would like a UA or a hair fall. Well. UA and hair follicle. Um, and so I have provided the address, um, his work information, all of that. Um, I'd like to have him evaluated for possible placement um, prior to having the uh, adversary. And Your Honor, the, the department's not opposed to 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 pursuing um, the the avenue of, of looking into to both fathers, actually. But the the, the issue that we have with the hair follicle and the UA is that both were offered to him on the 30th of January and he didn't show. And so there's concern about delaying these proceedings um, when Mr. Wynn um, won't, won't participate in it anyway, and it just delays the inevitable. So we're asking today for temporary orders to be put in place with the understanding that the, the parties will work towards any possible um, placement that makes sense or access that makes sense with the, uh, with the fathers. Your Honor, on behalf of the children, I the the child um, Marley at issue. It doesn't matter whether the um, results of the drug test were negative. He was involved in the original it, um, conditions that brought this suit into um, the MTP. So I would be objecting um, to placement with Mr. Wynn. Um, I think he needs domestic violence and drug treatment, given the facts that I'm aware of from the original case. And, and Your Honor, uh, I represent Ms. Kitchens. We oppose any placement with Mr. Wynn. He has extensive criminal history, including drugs, domestic violence, violation of protective orders. Um, and he has had the opportunity for several days to do a hair follicle and a drug test and has not shown. So uh, I don't think delaying this will, will make any difference in regards to Mr. Wynn. Mr. Weather, you got any say in this? Uh, we plan but, sir, I was only given 20 to 24 hours to, to, to get to a drug testing facility. Hang on, Mr. Wynn. A... Hang on, Mr. Wynn. Okay. Hang on. I All didn't right, ask sorry, you yet. Sorry. Go ahead, Mr. Weatherby. Oh, I'm sorry. I thought you said Mr. Wynn. That's okay. Uh, we, we plan to ask for placement of, of Mr. Uh, Hopkins' child with him, but uh, it's a little premature today because I haven't had a chance to investigate his home. Where are the children placed right now? Maternal thought, grandmother. They're with the maternal grandmother, young. Yeah. And your honor, that's who they were throughout the the uh, the court order services case. Right. We've been at this for a while. This is this is already a court order services case, and um, 
we've got everybody here. I want to move forward. So I'm going to give you the opportunity to confer for another minute and see if you can come up with something. And if not, we're going to have an adversary here. So um, who wants to talk or do you want to talk? Is it going to be fruitful? If Can I get a breakout room with my client, Judge? You may. All right, if I get everybody back into the courtroom, please. Make sure your videos are on if you can get them on and make sure your camera or your device is still, please. Back now. All right, before we went into breakout room, the court had sworn all of the witnesses. Um, Ms. Kyler Green, do we have any agreements at this time that we can put on the record? We do, Your Honor. Well, Would you like for me to, to explain those to the court? Yes, ma'am. Okay, so the the parties agree for or, um, the Miss Kitchens and Mr. Hopkins agree for the department to have TMC and for um, possessory conservative temporary possessory conservatorship to go to both of them. Um, as for Miss Kitchens, she is currently in inpatient, so the agreement is for her to continue there and to follow all recommendations upon discharge. Um, we've agreed to visits one time to one time a week for one hour, supervised by the department. If those, hang on, hang on just a second, Miss Kyler Green. I'm trying to get my screen to cooperate with me, so I can make sure I go this down. All right, Mom is in inpatient. She's going to stay there. Yes, Your Honor. Okay. And follow all recommendations upon any sort of discharge or successful discharge from inpatient. Um, right. uh, she, uh, we've agreed to individual for her to engage in individual therapy, uh, parenting classes. She received a psychological eval in December of 2023. And so the parties agree to use that psychological eval for purposes of this case. Um, uh, the parties agree that under 262.013, um, this is not a, um, an admission to the um, allegations in the affidavit. Um, uh, uh, in terms of visitation, Your Honor, the parties agree to visits one time a week for one hour to be supervised by the department. Uh, if at her inpatient facility they do not allow in-person visits, um, then the parties agree for those visits to be virtual with the children. Okay, so you agree to one hour per week at the facility? But if yes. not, then what was it virtual? Same same amount of time, Your Honor. One hour a, a, a week. Um, once one hour a week uh, virtual. All right. Um, we don't have the specifics, Your Honor, for Mr. Hopkins, except for the TMC and uh, temporary possessory conservatorship. But um, we'll engage in a family group conference for that to establish the guidelines or the services that he agrees to engage in. Okay. Now... And Ms. Acevedo, does your client agree to TMC at all? Yes, Judge. My client um, is in agreement with uh, the department taking temporary managed conservatorship. Okay, so then there's an agreement from all parties to stipulate as to the reasonable efforts made in this case? Yes, sure. Yes, sure. Okay, we just don't have an agreement on placement. Yes, Your Honor. So from the department's perspective, right now, the children are placed with the maternal grandmother, and that should stay um, for now. What the department agrees to, and I think this is the point of contention, is that as time goes on and visitations potentially occur and drug testing is had, we will agree to uh, determine appropriately where the children should, if the children should change placements and be potentially placed with their fathers while um, while this case is pending. Um, and I'll, I'll let the children's attorney talk to that that door being continued to be opened, I suppose, for potential placement in the future. We do not feel at this point in time that any placement is appropriate, uh, specifically to Mr. Wynn, given the uh, concerns that we have at the time that are addressed in the affidavit and that have come to light uh, since the uh, removal has been filed. And Your Honor, uh, my client, Ms. Kitchen, she... Uh does not want her children separated. She wants them to remain with her mother. And we would ask that if if there is a decision or, uh, or a request to uh, separate the children, that we have the court order that and have a hearing on that um, instead of the, the, the children being separated without any court intervention. Children have been together their whole lives and uh, been living with the grandma, grandmother pretty much uh, the majority of that time as well. And so... I think everybody needs the opportunity to participate in the services and then 
in, can go back to court to determine where the children need to be, but I don't think they need to be separated right now um, in place with uh, their fathers. Okay. Then, based on the positions of the parties, it sounds like Miss Tyler Green is saying the department is not willing. <clears throat> sounds like the department, mom, and Miss Hellrung are not willing at this time to place with either father. Miss Acevedo's client is asking for at a minimum an evaluation. Um, I don't know what evidence you want to put on since everybody's going to stipulate to the reasonable efforts. I imagine everybody's going to stipulate to the testimony of the investigator as to the findings the court has to make taking 262-013 into consideration. But as far as placement, what evidence do you want to put on Ms. Acevedo? I think you kind of have the burden here. Um, if the court's okay with just making argument, Judge? I'm fine with, with that. I just don't want to give anybody else the opportunity they have. If they want to put on a little evidence, I'll allow it. Hey, Your Honor, because I do, would, would like to call um, Ms. Winky. Okay. Well, why don't we do this? Ms. Kyla Green, I would like to get Ms. Winky's feelings and testimony as far as this agreement and the placement of the children on the record. <laughs> Uh, and the testimony as to uh, the findings that are required under 262. So if you want to get that, then I'll allow the other parties to cross her and hopefully we'll get out the evidence that we're looking for here from Ms. Hellrung and Ms. Acevedo to cross. So okay. with that, you can go ahead and choose your witness. Thank you, Your Honor. Ms. Winky, um, uh, what's your role in this case? Um, I'm a family-based safety services worker. And um, were you involved in this case when it was under family-based? Yes. Okay. And so are, are you the individual who drafted the affidavit for removal? Yes. Okay. Uh, let's, um, in regards to the, the, the agreements that you've heard on the record, is that your understanding as to what the, um, after speaking with the parents as to what their uh, agreement is? Um, based on today? Yes. Okay. And have you, um, from the department's perspective is, do you, feel that that's in the best interest of the children for the department to take TMC? Yes. Okay. And the services that were um, discussed, do you feel like that's in the best interest of the children as well for the parents to address the needs that brought the, uh, the children into the care of the department? Yes. Okay. Um, during your investigation, um, did you, uh, did you come across any, or do you have any concerns about Mr. Wynn's um, access to his child? Yes, I do. Okay. Um, based on your interactions with, uh, based on your conversations with the parties, what are your concerns about Mr. Wynn? Um, I have concerns for um, substance abuse. Um, I have concerns that um, Bailey Kitchens and Lee both have stated that they were present and at Robert's home. Um, prior to the accident that got us involved. <clears throat> and Who was that, injured in that accident? Um, Bailey Kitchens was injured as well as Levi. And how old is Levi? Levi is six years old. And in addition to being present in the home of Mr. Wind uh, directly prior to the accident, what, um, what has Ms. Kitchens said was occurring at the time that they were in the home? Uh, Bailey Kitchens stated during her family strengths and needs assessment um, that she and Robert were using methamphetamine and drinking alcohol. And at the time of the accident, uh, when she was brought to the hospital, did she also test positive for both of those? Yes, she did. And was Levi forensically interviewed? Yes, he was. And as a result of that forensic interview, were there also uh, corroborating statements about where uh, Ms. Kitchens, Levi, and Marley were prior to the accident? Yes. Have you spoken with Mr. Wynn since uh, the time of the removal? Yes. Are, do you also have concerns as to his criminal history? Yes, I do. Okay. Um, did he make any admissions to you about any uh, criminal involvement that he's had? Yes, he did. And what were those? 
Um, he stated that in November of 2023, um, he got into um, an altercation with his mother where he threw a, um, a beer bottle or beer can in her home and that his mother then pulled a gun on him and uh, shot the gun at him. And when police arrived, he was arrested um, and for uh, for assault on a family member. Are those charges pending? Yes, those are pending. Have you had an opportunity to assess his home? No, I have not. And um, have you had an opportunity to fully assess um, any visits or, or interactions between him and his child? He did have one visit. Did he arrive on time? Yes. No, he did not. Um, did you also um, set up a drug uh, drug testing for him? I did. And how many? Uh, how long of a window did you give him to drug test? Um, on the thirtieth of January, I gave him twenty four hours to drug test, and I gave him two different uh, facilities that he could go to in order to drug test. Um, one on a walk-in basis and one scheduled, um, and he did not uh, attend either um, either of the drug te- uh, either of the facilities to drug test. Okay, so as of right now, is there any way to ascertain whether or not he is continuing to use? No. And is that a concern you have in regards to any potential placement of uh, his child with him? Absolutely. Okay. Um, do you have in mind any specific services that you would like to see him uh, work that could potentially uh, ascertain if he if he would be appropriate to be a placement for his child or home for his child? Um, I would think um, a drug and alcohol assessment would be appropriate due to his admissions that he has used meth in the past two years. Um, I would think that um, a, a BIP assessment would be appropriate just based on um, information that I've gathered from Bailey and from Levi about possible domestic violence in the home. Can you be specific about that, um, parent, that information? Um, Bailey has made mention of domestic violence between her and Robert and Levi during his forensic interview stated that um, there was fighting that would lead to wrestling um, between Robert and Bailey when they were and, angry with each other. Okay. And based on your experience as a caseworker, um, what is, what does that mean? Wrestling while fighting? Fighting. It means, yeah, physical fighting. Okay. Um, okay. I'm sorry. I interrupted you. You said an OSAR, BIP, and what else? Um, parenting classes. Um, as of right now, are you aware of any sort of prior court orders that exist as to his uh, visitation plan? I don't believe so, no. You're not aware of them? No, I'm not aware of um, like custody orders. Yes. No, no, I'm not aware of that. Okay. Um, any other services that you would think would be... Um, fruitful to determine if uh, if Marley being placed in his home would ever be appropriate? Um, more than likely, some therapy would also be helpful. Okay, okay. thank Brian, you. Uh, okay. Your Honor, I have no further questions. I'll pass the witness. I'll wait to ask my questions. Go ahead, Ms. Fuller. Ms. Winky, in regards to uh, Mr. Wynn, have you pulled any police reports to determine the extent of his uh, criminal incidents? Um, I didn't pull police reports, only the criminal history. And so the history included drug, substance abuse, DWIs, um, and assault? Yes. And were there violations of protective order? Yes, there was one. Um, in regards to uh, placement, have you have you been to his home? I have not been to his home. Okay. Have you been able to talk to his employer? 
No, I have not. Okay. And do you feel it would be in uh, Marley's best interest to move her from her grandmother's grandparents' home and in, into the home of Mr. Wynn? I do not believe that would be in her best interest. And, and just to ask you, you haven't been able to do, have you done any type of investigation with uh, regarding Mr. Hopkins? Have you been to his home? Um, no, I have not. Have you talked have to not. his employer? Have you talked to his employer? Have you spoken to his employer? I have not. Have you run a criminal background check? I have. Okay. Is there anything concerning in Mr. Hopkins' background? No, he has no criminal history. Okay. So in regards to uh, Mr. Hopkins, are, we, are you asking, what services are you going to ask him to do? Um, I would just have to defer to um, the worker that does the family strengths and needs assessment to see um, what needs would be, you know, what needs are identified. But just from personal experience, I would believe that he would benefit from parenting, definitely. Do you think it would be appropriate for the, the fathers to both do hair follicles just to get a baseline to determine whether uh, drugs is, is an issue in this case? Yes. And are you recommend are you recommending that Levi stay with his grandparents at this time? Yes. I'll pass the witness, Your Honor. Ms. Acevedo. Thank you, Judge. Um, Ms. Winky, so you've been the, the family-based worker that's worked with the, the family, I guess, since the inception? No, I've been working with the family since December. Okay. Was there a family-based case prior to that? Uh, yes, there was. And how long was that case open for? Do you know? Um, October 25th. Um, do you know if Mr. Wynn was involved in that case? Uh, no, he wasn't. Um, do you know why he wasn't? Um, he wasn't involved because we had no contact information for Robert. Um, Bailey did not provide that information to me until the day of the removal. Okay. Um, and a lot of the information that you've talked about is just information that has been given from the maternal side, whether it's mom or maternal grandmother. No. Where else have you gotten this information? Um, I got the information from Bailey herself during the family strengths and needs assessment. Um, I got the information from the forensic interview that took place on August 15th of Levi at CAP. Okay, that's what I'm saying. So uh, you talked to mom, right? And she was giving you this information, correct? Correct. You know, I'd object. She, uh, that was asked and answered. She said she got the information from interviews, from her own research, from the mom. It wasn't just the maternal side. She already answered that she did her own investigation in regards to Mr. Wynn. She even talked about the criminal history that she researched. That's the saying. Let's move on. Uh, did you make any efforts to contact Mr. Wynn your, yourself since December? Yes. What efforts did you make? Um, I attempted uh, phone calls, uh, but I did not have the correct phone number. He had uh, changed his phone number. Um, and I ran a finder's report, with, uh, which is, you know, past, past uh, residential history and phone numbers. None of those um, addresses on the finder's report were accurate. Okay. Um, and do you know if mom was in contact with, with the father, Mr. Wynn, during this time? Um, no, she, no, she, she didn't tell me. And when was the incident? What day was the incident that, uh, for the removal? Of the, of the accident? Yes. August 10th. So she had contact at that time, but didn't have contact throughout the case? When I spoke with Robert, he stated that Bailey didn't say anything to him about the CPS case until the day of the removal. Your Honor, I also, I'm just going to object to relevance at this point. I'm not sure where this line of questioning is going in regards to 
safety or, or placement or any of the things that are on the table? Well, my understanding was that removal is agreed. I think Ms. Winky has testified as to removal. Um, I don't know if any of this is intended to be specifically related to placement, Ms. Acevedo. I think it does judge because it's my client's position that he's, you know, the, the non-offending parent. He wasn't involved in any of these cases and there's no proof that he had any knowledge of it. But what's at issue, Your Honor, are the, the concerns of drug use and domestic violence. That's that's it's, it's not so much that he was in the car at the time of the accident, but he was directly involved to the dangers that led up to the car being in an accident and the, one of the children being hurt. So I, I think the issue is whether or not there's any evidence against what's already been testified to that there is potential meth use with this father and that there's any history and current pending issues with domestic violence. That's a concern. Uh, we'd like to get those issues addressed from the department side, but as of yet, there's no evidence to contest that those uh, red flags exist. I, I think that we need to limit the scope of the cross, Ms. Acevedo, to any rebuttal evidence as to what Ms. Winkie's testified to rather than any further testimony about the reasons for removal um, outside of how it pertains to your client's actions. If, if, if you've got, if you believe that Ms. Winky can testify to any rebuttal information, okay. If not, it seems like you might need to call either your client or somebody else to rebut what she's testified to. But that's kind of what I'm looking for right now because um, removal is not contested. Okay. Thank you, Judge. I'll move on. Um, with, with regard to the, the accident incident, um, did you pull that police report? The police report was pulled during the investigation. Did you review it? I did. Um, does it indicate that the child was actually released to my client? Um, I don't believe so. No. Okay. So do you know if, if, so if he's indicated that he actually picked up the child, that would be false? No, um, I am aware that he was on the scene of the crime or of the, okay. uh, of the accident. Not the and is there any evidence in the police reports that indicated that uh, the officers felt that he was intoxicated? No. Again, Your Honor, I'm not understanding where we're going with this. If the removal is agreed to... Um, Really, the placement is based on the fact that he has extensive criminal history inc that includes drugs and domestic violence. And that's, you know, that's Judge, why no, no one's agreeing to placement. I'm not submitting that any of these things in the affidavit are actually true, Judge. He is in agreement with the TMC. All he's asking for is an evaluation. I'm not here asking for placement or anything more than an evaluation on a father that, that there's limited information that they've gathered on. Well, I, and I don't know that anybody is necessarily opposed to an evaluation. I think what they're opposed to is placement. With I'm not fighting for placement. Ms. Hellrung is, is opposed to any type of evaluation. Well, and that that's fine if that's her position. I just don't know how much more of this line of questioning is going to get me there um, as far as whether I, you know, I'm willing to order that. Because it, it just seems like we're really far into removal at this point. And I, I, I understand your angle and what you're trying to uncover. I just think I've, maybe I've heard what I need to hear. Um, did you ever pull any child support orders? Can you repeat the question? Did you ever pull any uh, child support orders with regard to Mr. Wynn? No, I did not. Okay. Did you ever ask Ms. Uh, Kitchens if he was validated as the father? I did not ask uh, Bailey Kitchens. Okay. And do you know if there's uh, any type of suit out there that names him as the father through DNA? Yes. I'm, I'm a not of DNA, but I am aware of a um, of child support, of a child support order. Okay. I'll pass, Judge. Mr. Weatherby? No questions at this time, Your Honor. We 
plan to request placement, but need to get some investigation done first of, of, of Mr. Right. residence. So it'd be premature. Ms. Halron? Um, just two questions. One, it it's clear he is the presumed father in this case um, to Marley. Is that correct? Yes. Okay. Um, did at any time um, Ms. Kitchens tell you she was getting her methamphetamines from Mr. Wynn? Yes, that has been mentioned. Okay. Um, then Can he, I... Um, go ahead. Um, I did not hear that from Bailey specifically. I, I did hear that from the family, though. Okay. Um, that's all I have. Follow up, Ms. Calgary. No, sir. Thank you. Any other questions for Ms. Winky? No, Your Honor. Ms. Winky, I'm just going to ask you for purposes of the record. Um, it sounds to me as if you have testified that there was a danger to the physical health, health or safety of the children. It would be contrary to the welfare of the children to remain in the home. Is that correct? Correct. And that the urgent need for protection required the immediate removal of the children and that reasonable efforts were made consistent with the circumstances of providing for the safety of the children to prevent or eliminate the yes. removal. And yes. reasonable efforts have been made to enable the children to return home, but there's a substantial risk of continuing danger if they are returned home. Yes. Okay. Any other witnesses? No, Your Honor. Anybody else need to call a witness? I don't believe so, Your Honor. I just have arguments. No, Your Honor. Okay. Well, let's go ahead and go through argument. We'll start with the department. We'll go down the line. Ms. Carla Green. Uh, Your Honor, uh, this, uh, to, I guess, taking out off, off the table what has already been agreed to, I think what's at issue right now is whether or not Mr. Wynn is either suitable right now or suitable in the future. Right now, the department's perspective is that he's clearly not suitable. Um, we've agreed to uh, visitation with him and um, having some um, beginnings of, of, of being able to ascertain whether he's appropriate with his child, first and foremost, um, but as for placement, we're not in agreement for placement to be right now, but from the department's perspective, whenever there's a parent who's engaging in services and is starting to address the dangers that brought the ch children into care, um, the doors never shut completely. Uh, and, and so there is a, um, a recognition that if Mr. Wynn or when Mr. Wynn hopefully engages in services, that there will be um, potentially a conversation about whether or not there can be further access. But as of right now, we're opposed to it. We agree that the children shouldn't be moved until um, there's a court order that says that they should be separated. Um, and I think those are the only contested issues, Your Honor. Thank you. Ms. Fuller. Um, and as Ms. Kyla Green said, we have an agreement. My client is in, impatient. That's where she needs to be. She understands that if there is no, if a uh, vert, Physical visits are not allowed at her facility that they will be virtual and, until she gets out of, of treatment. Um, she does not want her children separated. Uh, she's very concerned about any uh, discussion of putting Marley with Mr. Wynn um, due to his extensive history and, uh, and the drug use. Um, and so uh, we are opposed to any movement of the children until the court has a hearing on that. But we are in agreement with, with all the services and uh, the placement of the children with her mother. Thank you. And it's my understanding your client is an impatient. How long is she planning to be there? Uh, the initial program is 30 days and they have a, an additional 30 day supportive program that she applied for today. And she's not working. No, she's in, she's in Austin in, in the recovery program, Senate Okay. All right. Um, Mr. Weatherby. Uh, we're basically in agreement with uh, everything, but do plan to uh, do some investigation to see if the child can be placed with, with Mr. Hopkins. But that's part of how the case will work out. But I don't, I don't think we're ready to do that today. Okay. Ms. Acevedo. Um, judge, again, my client is, is in agreement with the uh, TMC, but he's not stipulating to any of the things that are in the affidavit. Um, there's, you know, this history of a family-based case and MTP and, and dad was not involved. And so 
um, that that is is you know he said she said he he was around he says he didn't have any information um he's just asking to be evaluated for placement um he's willing to take a, a hair follicle i provided the address i've been, uh, uh, provided his em employment information um he's open to having anyone in the home um as far as the criminal history it, it's my understanding that many of these have been dismissed the only one that's open is uh is the abi um he hasn't been adjudicated on that um, and so, uh, you know, I, I think from our standpoint is he's just asking, you know, to to sort of have a voice. I mean, he hasn't had his own voice and everybody has has this opinion based on on what everybody has said without even speaking to him. And so um, I, I think he, he deserves an opportunity to be evaluated. Thank you, Ms. Acevedo. Ms. Haro. Your Honor, the code is clear um, that if the return of the child to the parent from which the child was removed um, poses a continuing danger, the court shall place unless the court finds that reasonable efforts were made to enable the person that would be Mr. Wynn's possession, but possession by that person presents a continuing danger to the physical health or safety of the child caused by an act or failure to act by that person, including um, being a victim of trafficking. I'm not alleging trafficking here, but I do believe it, it. there is a continuing danger. Mr. Wynn was involved in the circumstances that led to involvement by the department. Um, there have been allegations that um, Ms. Kitchens was getting her drugs from Mr. Wynn. Um, the fact that he was not involved in the family-based services case because Ms. Kitchens did not provide the information does not go to the fact that the department didn't make reasonable efforts. Uh, Mr. Wynn has a considerably long criminal history. Um, there are ongoing um, domestic violence concerns, as well as the fact that um, Ms. Kitchens was using with Mr. Wynn. Um, as you know, we've been in this case for a little bit of time, and Ms. Kitchens was refusing to be honest about her use, which ultimately led to removal. But I do not think it is in the best interests of Marley, and I do believe there's a continuing danger with placement or even considering placement with Mr. Wynn. Um, the law is also clear that at the permanency hearing, if there is not a continuing danger, then the court shall place back with a parent, there is no continuing danger. But as long as there is a continuing danger to these children, um, I would have to object to the court um, considering placement at this time. Thank you. Thank you. Um, anything from CASA? Yes, sir. We believe that the current placement is the best for the children right now. We were able to observe the visit yesterday. Mr. Wynn does have a connection with his daughter, and there's obviously a bond there, but there's also a very strong bond with the grandfather that was there prior. And right now, due to his previous history, we just believe that current placement is the best right now. Thank you, Mr. McLemore. Any rebuttal, Ms. Carla Green? No, Your Honor. All right. Everybody been served in this case? Your Honor, waivers of service were signed by Mr. Hopkins and Ms. Kitchens on January 26, 2024, and a waiver of service was uh, signed by Mr. Wynn yesterday, January 31st, 2024. I don't believe that the, the waiver of service from the 31st has been uh, filed with the court yet. Uh, well, the court will find that all the parents were decided served and or have made an appearance in this case by virtue of their agreement to TMC. Court finds that um, the agreement of the parties for the parents to be named as possessory conservators and for the Department of Family Protective Services to be named as the temporary managing conservators in the best interest of the children. Court finds that um, the services laid out and agreed to by the parties are appropriate in the best interest of the children. Court finds the parties are or orders the parties to also uh, attend a family group conference to further develop any services uh, not lined out here. I'm gonna order the mother to stay in inpatient, to engage in individual therapy, parenting. Um, the parties have agreed to go off the psycho valve from December of 2023 and to use that for evalu evaluation purposes in this case. Court uh, recognizes that under chapter 216.013 that the agreement of the parents to voluntary uh, 
conservatorship is not an agreement to any of the allegations in the affidavit. Court will order that the parties have visitation of one hour a week at the facility with the mother. But if that's not available, then that will be virtual for one hour a week. Um, the court finds the parties have stipulated to reasonable efforts in this case, but Ms. Winky has also testified. And based on the testimony of Ms. Winky, the court finds that there's sufficient evidence to satisfy a person of a reasonable, excuse me, let me start over again because I lost my place here. There's um, sufficient evidence to satisfy a person of ordinary prudence and caution that reasonable efforts were made to enable the children to return home, but the children are not able to return home due to a substantial risk of continuing danger, that there was a danger to the physical health or safety of the children caused by an act or failure to the act of the person in of possession for the children to remain in the home is contrary to the welfare of the children. The urgent need for protection required the immediate removal of the children and reasonable efforts consistent with the circumstances providing for the safety of the children were made to eliminate or prevent the children's removal and reasonable efforts have been made to enable the children to return home, but there's a substantial risk of continuing danger if the children are returned home. The court finds that this is in the best interest of the children. Um, I'm going to order that the parties have this FGC as soon as possible to discuss not only the services, but several things that have come up today. It sounds like there's a lot of um, miscommunication as to how we got here, even though there was a court ordered services case open for a while. Mr. Wynn is apparently new to it. But based on the concerns I'm hearing today, um, I'm, I'm not moving the children. The children are going to stay where they are with the maternal grandmother. And we're not going to do any extra evaluations at this time. I heard evidence that Mr. Wynn had the opportunity to go to either two different facilities to prove that he was not using and he didn't go. So um, as Ms. Oron pointed out, the code is clear that not only do we have to have an adversary hearing, but then we have to have a status hearing and permanency hearings. And that's the vehicle for where we determine whether or not, a, excuse me, a parent is in compliance and is cooperating. And if a parent is in compliance and they're cooperating and they have a suitable placement, then we'll take that up at that time. Um, I think what I want to see happen in this case right now is for us to come back for our status hearing on March the 8th at 1.30. That's March 8th, 2024 at 1.30. And I want to know if Mr. Hopkins and Mr. Wynn went to the family group conference and if they're engaging in services. And I am going to order that both fathers should have a hair follicle for a baseline. Um, and I'm going to order that those be done. Um, I'd like to have them done by five o'clock tomorrow. And that order includes no altering your hair. Don't cut it. Don't bleach it. Don't dye it. Don't do anything to your hair until you've had a hair follicle examination. That's to get a baseline. It doesn't suggest that you're using right now. It, it helps me to see if you are using right now and if you are what level. And I think that that is important to help us to get to the status hearing on March the 8th, which is a little over a month away, and assess whether or not we have a problem that we need to dig into further or assess whether or not we have an available placement. I don't know today, so I'm not going to make that order. Um, I'm going to find that Miss Kitchens is indigent and uh, is in an inpatient facility and unable to work at this time. Mr. Hopkins, do you have a job, sir? Yes, sir. Or yes, you yes, Your Honor. Can you all hear me? Hello? I think you lost your audio, Judge. Can't hear you. Can you hear me? Yes, sir. Okay. I was asking you if you have a job. Yes, Your Honor. All right. Do you currently have disposable income that would allow you to pay for an attorney in this case? Uh, working on it. Yes, sir. 
Well, no, let me let me ask you. Sitting here right now, could you afford an attorney to represent you in this case? No, sir. Do you have any money saved up at all that you could use to help you pay for an attorney? Uh, like I said, this is so last minute. Uh, well, I, I'm not asking you to plan ahead. I'm asking you if sitting here right now, you could afford an attorney or you have money and savings that would help you to pay for an attorney. How it's much yes is an no. attorney? No, no, sir. Do you have any money saved up that would allow you to put anything towards an attorney? No, sir. Okay. Do you have anything you could sell right now that would help you pay for an attorney? Yes, sir. All right. Then I'll find that you're indigent in this case. At this, at this point in time, I'll allow you to continue with Mr. Weatherby representing you in this matter. Mr. Wynn, do you have a job right now? Yes, sir. Do you currently have disposable income that would allow you to pay for an attorney to represent you in this case? No, sir. Do you have anything saved up that you could use to pay for an attorney in this case? No, sir. It's the winter time. It's it's the slowest season for me. All right. Do you have anything you could sell that would allow you the money to pay for an attorney? No, not at this time. All right. I'll find that you're indigent for the purposes of this case, and we'll continue Ms. Acevedo and her appointment to represent you. All right. Thank you, sir. All right. Ms. Connor Green, I have stated that the status hearing is March the 8th, 2024 at 1.30. I've made the findings and orders. Besides the admonishment, is there anything I failed to address? Yes, Your Honor. Just two questions. First, um, the caseworker asked whether or not um, Ms. Kitchens could provide a release of information with her um, inpatient facility. She is asking that the court order that uh, she do that. Um, and second, um, we do have a setting for the compliance hearing that I believe is moot at this point. Um, the compliance hearing is set for February 9th. Yes, Your Honor, and the department at the at the end of this case was intending to file a dismissal to that. Give me a dismissal order. We'll take that hearing off the docket. We were going to send it out for signatures, Your Honor. Is that necessary or can I just send you an order? Send it to me. Okay, thank you. Thank you, Your Honor. You're welcome. All right, I have to admonish the parents of the state of Texas gives parents in CPS cases 12 months to demonstrate that you can provide a safe, stable, violence, and drug-free home for your children. If you cannot do so within the 12-month period, your rights to your children are subject to restriction as they are now or termination. Please take advantage of the opportunities that you're being provided right now to work services and to work with the professionals in this case to get you on the right track so that when we come back on March the 8th, you've made some progress and we're working towards reunification. Okay. Thank you all for your time and your service. That concludes this hearing. I'll see you March 8th, 2024 at 1.30. Nothing further. All for